It's autumn and that means that the leaves have started to change colour. And today on Grow It I'm going to show you why this happens and a great experiment that you can try yourself at home. Have you ever wondered why leaves turn from green to all of these colours in autumn? Well it's because leaves contain a load of different pigments and all of these pigments are made up of different colour creating molecules. During the spring and summer months when the days are longer and warmer, a lot of plants and trees use the leaves to create food energy using a process called photosynthesis. And I'm not going to go into the ins and outs of photosynthesis today but I did do a video quite a while ago um, so I will make sure there's a link for that one in the description and I'll, I'll make sure there's like a little pop up at the top as well. So if you do want to learn about photosynthesis and how plants make food from sunlight that's a really good video just to get started and get the basics on so do check that out um, like I say I won't go into too much detail on that today but in terms of today's video photosynthesis uses a green reflecting pigment in the leaves called chlorophyll which is what gives the leaves the green color in autumn, once the colder, shorter days arrive, a lot of trees don't need to photosynthesize to make energy with the leaves anymore, which in turn means that they no longer need the green pigment. As the green chlorophyll breaks down, the other pigments in the leaves, some of which were already there during the summer, start to become visible. There are many types of pigments in plant leaves. As we just mentioned, chlorophyll makes them green and helps the plant to carry out photosynthesis during the sunny months. Once autumn arrives and the green fades, other pigments such as yellow, orange and red become more visible. The yellow pigments are called xanthophylls and carotenoids give the leaves an orange colour. Photosynthesis does use all of these pigments during the summer, but because the green is a lot more abundant, that's why we see the green colour on the leaves. These other pigments take longer to break down than chlorophyll does, so you can see them as they become visible in autumn leaves as the remaining pigments. Xanthophylls and carotenoids are also what give things like bananas, uh, carrots, daffodils, dandelions, anything that's yellow or orange its colour. There are also anthocyanins which are intense red pigments. These aren't made during the summer and only appear as the autumn goes on. Anthocyanins are also what give plants and fruit their red purple or blue colours. Although leaves contain all of these pigments jumbled together, we can actually see these and separate them out using a process called paper chromatography. This process dissolves the pigments into a solution and then we can absorb them into a piece of paper. And the way this works is that some pigments are larger than other pigments, so the larger ones have a harder time travelling through the paper as it's absorbed, whereas the smaller pigments have an easier time and they can go further through the strip of paper. So you end up with the larger pigments at one end and the smaller pigments at the other end and then that gives you a split of all the different colors throughout the piece of paper. So here's everything that you're going to need to do the experiment and obviously the first thing you're going to need is a load of leaves and I've got a big selection here all different colors so you want to find as much of a range of colors as you can so I've got these nice red ones some dark red ones um, I've got loads of yellow and oranges some lighter yellows and greens and then some darker greens and then just as a bonus I've got some really nice coleus leaves um, if you've not seen these before they've got really nice purples reds pinks and greens in there some jars uh, some little plastic tubs, some clothes pegs, scissors, sticks. Uh, then for your paper you want to use some um, coffee filter papers. If you haven't got any of these you can also use kitchen roll but it does work better with filter paper. And then you're going to need a solvent. In this case I'm going to be using nail polish remover which is acetone based. But you can also use rubbing alcohol uh, which is isopropyl alcohol. Uh, yep, yeah, that's everything you're going to need so let's crack on. And a quick warning before you do start, make sure that you are careful with any solvents that you're using and don't breathe in the fumes. And if you are doing this on a table or something that you're particularly fond of, make sure you cover it over first because obviously solvents might dissolve any kind of uh, varnishes on your table or whatever. And these pigments do also have the potential to stain. So uh, yeah, make sure you cover all your tables and get cracking. So the first thing you need to do, if you haven't already, go and collect some leaves and try and get them at different stages of changing colour like these ones. We saw them into different piles, so we've got like the yellow and green on this side, the yellowy orange in the middle, and then the red ones just here on the right. And then the next thing we need to do is get our paper strips ready. So here's our coffee filter papers, I've just flattened these out, and if you've got a couple together like this, it just makes it a bit quicker. And all I'm going to do is cut these into strips. There we go, you don't need this many. So I'll just get rid of these uh, short ones off the sides. All I'm going to do is just cut this in half again. There we go. And then you can just separate them. Got like quite a few nice pieces there now. 
So I'll just move these out of the way a sec. Just move them to the back. There we go. So then next you're going to need your jars. We'll just do one at a time. So I'm just going to get that. I'm going to put about a tablespoon of your acetone in there. Just enough to cover the bottom. And then we're going to get the scissors, or you can just use your hands. And we're just going to cut these up into little pieces and stick them in there. So I'll just do that quick. There we go, and that is all of them. So all I'm going to do now is get these, and I'm just going to stick them in the jar with the acetone. There we go, get all them bits in there. And then I'm just going to use something just to smush them into the jar. So all I've got really is a screwdriver. Forgot to bring a spoon or anything with me. So I'm just going to use this screwdriver as a smushing stick. And I'm going to smush all these in here. And you want to really get them, um, you know, really mushed up. So that's just going to take a couple of minutes. So uh, fast forward again. Just get them all squashed right down in the bottom so that they're in contact with that. And that's that one done, so we'll just move on to the next one. Get another jar. And then I'm just going to do the same with the orange ones. And just to speed it up a bit, give them a good smushing in your hands as well. Really scrunch them up and then stick them in your jar. Same again for the red ones. Into the jar. And finally, it's got the coleus leaves. I'm just going to do the same again. I'm just going to leave them for a minute. I'm just going to go and find a better smushing device because uh, I'm not convinced that that's uh, smushed enough. So give me a sec and then uh, we'll carry on. The other thing I could find was a uh, paintbrush handle. So yeah, if that doesn't work, it's tough. So I'm just going to give these another good mix in. So there we go, they are nice and mixed. And what I'm going to do is just leave these for about 30 minutes. Perhaps I'll give them another mix in another 15 minutes just to help them along a bit. But yeah, in half an hour we'll come back and we'll have a look how these have got on. Right, here we go. So these jars have now been here for half an hour. And as you can see... They've um, started to break down a bit. This, the uh, coleus leaves especially, they've broken down really good because they're really nice soft leaves. But the uh, tree leaves are a bit more rigid so they've not quite smushed up as much. But you can still see, I can still see that the pigment still has come out of those into the acetone. So all I need to do now is um, just get the solution from the bottom of each of these jars and put it into another smaller tub. So I've just got some of these little plastic tubs and they're going to do just fine. I've only got three, so I've had to make an extra one out of a bottle. Um, so yeah, all I'm going to do now, tip these into there. You don't need any of the leaf, so that can just go in the bin. Um, and yeah, let's get these to transferred in. Don't worry if you get a couple of bits in, that's fine. So that's uh, our solution from the coleus leaves. And as you can see, it's uh, it's like a brownie orangey colour. And that's because all the pigment from those leaves is now in the acetone. There's our red.
yellow. And there they are side by side. So we've got the coleus, we've got the green yellow, we've got the yellow and the yellowy orange, and then the red on this side. And you can see the difference between those already. So there we go, and all I've done is put them in a line here, and then I've just put a pot on either side with a garden cane going across the top. And I'm just going to use them to attach to that. You can also just pour this into a jar or a bottle or something, and then use your peg to attach it to the side. But yeah, this is the easiest way for me. So like I say, I've just got this cane, Going to attach the papers to this with the pegs and then just let the ends go down into the solution so there we go and all i'm going to do is get these bits of paper and i'm going to just put them so they're just touching just into the solution like that and i'm going to use a peg and just peg it onto the stick and that's all there is to it so i'm just going to do that for each one of these there we go and that's it and now all you've got to do is wait again another 30 minutes and hopefully that is going to work. So there we go now these have been here for about half an hour 40 minutes and as you can see these have travelled up the paper really well. So all I need to do now is take away each of the little tubs and then just let the papers dry. So that's the next step, leave it for another 15 minutes or so while it dries out and then that's done. So here we are, they have all dried out now and um, I've got this bit of white horticultural fleece just to use as a bit of a white background so we can see the colours a bit better and we're just going to start with the green leaf which was um, a bit of a green and yellow um, and as you can see all the green is separated out at this end we've got a nice dark yellow here and then it goes into this lighter yellow up at this end so we can see both green and the yellow pigment in there and then next we've got this one which was the uh, leaves that were just yellow um, and slightly orange. And as you can see again, slightly darker at this end and it's, it's difficult to pick up on the camera, but it's got a slightly orange tinge to it. Um, and then we're going into the yellow band here again. And then we've got a lighter, uh, a lighter yellow band just up at this end. Um, and then next we've got the one from the red leaves and this is one that's turned out the best. Look at that one. So at this end here, we've got all this dark band of red which has turned out really, really vivid. Then we've got the yellow here and then just um, into the really pale stuff just up here at the top. But you can really see on this one the, the difference in the colours there. So we've got this really big band of red, red and orange, that has um, turned up in this leaf but wasn't in these leaves. So when we look at this, you can see that we've got the xanthophyll pigments in all three of these samples. All three of them have got that yellow colour to them, except this one has got the thick band of red, which does indicate that we've got those anthocyanins in there, uh, and that shows that they weren't present in those um, yellow and green leaves. So it has shown that it has developed later on. And then next we've got the one from the coleus leaves, which we did as the extra, and I like how this one's turned out as well. So you can see the it's picked up all of that yellow and green up at this end, and then all that pink and purple are spread on and has carried on traveling up through the paper. And another point is, um, I mean, I didn't really use any dark green leaves in this, so I really just had the uh, the yellowy green. But if it turns out maybe like this yellow one that's turned out quite pale um, and you want to try it again, just put more leaves in it. And then um, you can also try and smush them up more. Maybe if you've got a pestle and mortar or something, that would do a really good job. The more you can grind up those leaves and the more pigment you can get out of them, the better these results are going to be. So, yeah, if I was going to do this again, I'd perhaps do that. I'd use more leaves, but I'd definitely, definitely have some kind of way of smushing them up a bit better because <laughs> from the way I did it, it probably isn't as good as it could have been. But, I mean, this one's turned out really good and the coleus leaves have turned out really good. So, yeah, it's nice all round. And another interesting thing you can do, maybe I'll do this sometime, is do it with other intensely coloured like fruits and vegetables. So maybe you could use beetroots and see what the different colour makeup is in there, or um, blueberries, or carrots, uh, spinach, any any kind of intensely coloured fruit, leaf, vegetable, anything like that. If there's a lot of colour pigment in there, you can use this same experiment, draw it out across a piece of paper and see what's in there. 
So that's all there is to it. It's a really easy experiment and it's really interesting. So get the kids involved with it as well. Obviously give them a hand with the solvents and things, uh, but there's a lot of different jobs that they can do there. So it's a really good one to get them involved with and teach them about science and how leaves work and all the different pigments and things that are in the food. So yeah, have a go at it. And if you haven't already, why don't you consider subscribing to my channel just so that you can see loads of other videos like this and all my other gardening content as well. Um, I do new videos every Tuesday, so do check that out and maybe watch all my old videos as well like the ones about photosynthesis the ones about soil ph and loads of other plant science as well so yeah get cracking on that let me know in the comments if um, you do have a go with yourself because i'd love to hear how you get on and i'll see you next time